Still says unable to start video. I've started. But I think everyone else, everyone can um, can be unmuted, unmuted, unmuted. Right, it was unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. So all the committee members should be panelists, so you can unmute and mute freely. We just can't That's see each video. other. But we can see our names. <laughs> Do we have a uh, council member, Peter Norby? Uh, let me call um, Andy and see who set this up. One, two. Yeah, one. Here we go. Um, yeah, it's right there. Three. So that's, cause that's my video. We do, we do not, right. we do not have two, councilor uh, Norby, Mayor Sanchez. What was that? Uh, this is Michael Tully with the, with the city of Carlsbad and uh, council member uh, Peter Norby will not be in attendance today. Okay, and I'm not sure, have we heard from Council Member Jensen? We have not, um, I don't know if Stephanie has, um, but I have not heard anything right. from Councilor Jensen. We need four people to- um, Correct. Yeah. To have a quorum, I see only three of us. Correct, yeah. So we need one more person. Can someone from staff try to reach her, from city staff try to reach her and see if she can, come to the meeting so we can start the meeting. Mayor Sanchez, I will, I will do that. Thank you. I really, who was that? <laughs> That's oh. Stephanie. Sorry. Oh, Stephanie, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see you. <laughs> So um, Ed Pert is on the Zoom call, but he doesn't think you can hear him. Esther, are you able to hear me? This is Keith. Yes. Um, I'm trying to uh, multitask. Um, when you do the roll, if I'm busy on, my, on a phone call at the same time, um, please mark me as present and I'll be here back. Okay, we may not be able to have the meeting though if we cannot get one more person in. Okay, I just wanted to- so Thank you for being finish. here. And also Kelly, thank you for being here. We need to have uh, four of the six board members. This is Glenn's demo, I'm here as well. If you're, oh, not, Glenn, are you there? If you're not seeing me, I see my okay. picture. <laughs> okay, there you are. Okay, then we do have four people. We do have four. Okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're, I'm gonna um, hear from staff regarding council member Jensen. Uh, just let me know when you do hear from her, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to go ahead and call this meeting to order mm -hmm. and roll call. We do have uh, Kelly Devaney present, uh, Member uh, Keith Blackburn, Carlsbad Mayor Pro Tem present, and uh, Glenn Stimmel, Carlsbad Public Member present, as well as myself, uh, Esther Sanchez, Oceanside Mayor present. So we do have a quorum. And if staff could let me know if any of the other two um, are here, please let me know. So we do need to adopt the resolution in order to be able to continue. Um, this virtual meeting. This was as a request by council member, um, excuse me, Carl, uh, Carlsbad Mayor Pro Tem um, member Keith Blackburn. So Keith, thank you very much for bringing the back, that back up. Uh, is there a motion? Is there a motion so, to adopt the resolution? I so move. Thank you, is there a second? I second. Thank you. Um, I see no one raising their hands, so um, all those in favor uh, say aye. Aye. All those, aye. all those against say nay. Any abstentions? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that that passed unanimously. Okay, we're now at the comments from the audience. Do we have any requests to speak from the audience on items that are not on this agenda? Do we have any requests? Staff. 
I'm not hearing that we have any requests. We can come back to that. Should we hear someone? Because this is we're back to 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 doing this virtually. So maybe someone hasn't gotten uh, the hang of this yet. So. Um, Mayor Sanchez? Yes. Yes, this is Stephanie. Uh, we did not receive any prior written requests to speak on items of, on the agenda. If anybody would like to speak on items not on the agenda, they can raise their hand and I can unmute them. Okay. Um, I only have the board. So if you do see someone um, who has raised their hand from the public, please, uh, if you could please let me know. Do you see anyone? No, there's no one from the public um, okay. raising their hand. And just for your information, we do have about three or four par uh, public participants. And oh, I see a hand from Scott. Am I a part of the public and are in the in-group? I just wanna know. You're a uh, part of the public. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> You're not on the board, uh, the in other words. The Buena Vista Lagoon Foundation. What am I gonna okay. do? Welcome, Scott. Thank you very much for, um, and just let me know when you would like to um, say something on the item. Do you have anything to, that, that you would like to say on items not on the agenda? Well, uh, once we get around to wrapping this thing up, I'd like to comment on the uh, fire uh, on the Buena Vista Lagoon again. We're, okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and take comments from the audience at the end of the meeting? Perfect. And then you can speak then. Okay, so we're going to skip over three for now. Go to four, which is approval of the minutes from prior meeting meetings. We have November 15th, 2021, March 21st, 2022, and May 16th, uh, 2022. So um, if we have, we do have a quorum. We, we do need, um, out of the four, we do need three people who were here on those dates. Um, can, Mayor Sanchez? Yes. Um, with the members that we have present today, we can vote on the minutes from November 15, 2021 and the minutes from March 21st, 2021. Um, but we are unable to vote on the May 16th, 2022 uh, minutes uh, due to Peter Norby and Corey Jensen's absence today. Okay, thank you very much for that clarification. And you said tw um, March 21st, 2021, you meant March 21st, 2022, right? Correct, yes. So, so I'll hear a motion, I'll take a motion for uh, to approve the minutes from November 15th, 2021 and from March 21st, 2022. Is there a motion? I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Great. I, all those opposed say nay. I don't hear any, any abstentions, no abstentions. So um, uh, this, this motion passes unanimously by those um, members present. Okay, old Thank business. You. We have update on one of us Lagoon Enhancement Funding Ad Hoc Committee. And um, who would like to take that up, Kim? Yeah, I can take it up. Let me see. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> no problem. Um, so we met at the end of June, and the great news is that our project has been awarded to date approximately $4 million from two different grant programs um, from the state. In November of last year, of 2021, we were awarded $3 million from the Wildlife Conservation Board. And then in June, we found out that we were awarded $1 million from um, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, their Prop 1 grant. So um, we still need about four, a little over $4 million to, to get the project shovel ready. But we will, um, we just had our kickoff meeting today for the 30% design for the, uh, the $3 million, And we will be moving forward this fall with our technical investigations with which include our bathymetry, topography surveys, our vegetation surveys, and geotechnical um, to get us set up for moving forward to design. Um, we also discussed some future grant opportunities at our meeting. Um, we need to reach out to maybe 
our federal partners. I know that we were looking at a potential opportunity with, it was the Federal America, the beautiful grant, but unfortunately, um, we did not get that one um, approval to get that one submitted. Um, and now I, I was just informed of an additional federal opportunity, opportunity under um, NOAA. So we will be investigating those, um, those grant opportunities. And that, that's it. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very, very much. Are there any questions from the public? Are there any requests to speak on this? And um, uh, Scott, you have your hand up. Is that for this item? Do I? I didn't know that. Okay. Well, then it's I'll not lower my hand. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't Thanks see with you, but I saw your hand up. <laughs> um, so, uh, staff, Stephanie, uh, are there any requests to speak from the public on this item? Mayor Sanchez, there are no requests to speak on item 5A or B. Okay. Um, so sticking to 5A, are there any comments by the membership, the members regarding that report? Ed. Yes, hello. Uh, hi, said per hello. Um, hi, Mayor Sanchez. I just wanted to mention on, on the um, update on Buena Vista La Cat Lagoon Cattail Control, that ad hoc committee. I may just want to speak to that um, when the public speaks. I know Scott was going to, I think it was Scott who was going to talk about the fire, and then I have some updates on that. So would you like to just have me hold my comments until we get uh, we're, questions we're from the public? Because I think the, actually, that's that's the next item um, yeah. five, under five old business. And I, I was going to ask you if you would do the report, actually, if that's all right. Sure. With you. Um, so just to finish up with 5A, there were no comments from the public. And also, it appears that there are no other um, no comments by um, the members other to say, thank you so much, Kim. Keep, you know, keep getting us some funds. Yay. You know, I think you um, you. Um, Sandag has been wonderful in helping us find the, these funds. So thank you very, very much. All right, now 5B, update on one of this Lagoon Cattail Control Ad Hoc Committee. And um, Mr. Ed Pert, if you could uh, give a report on that. Yeah, this is Ed Pert. I'm the regional manager for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, if, if people don't know that. And I just wanted to mention that um, I have been in communication with John Tenalia. Uh, with regard to the grave concerns that many of the homeowners have, uh, especially after the fire. And right. um, so our staff is going to um, go into those areas where the fire burned and apply an herbicide to those areas in, in the near future. I don't know exactly what that's going to be, but it's going to be soon, which will um, hopefully retard the growth of those cattails to a great degree. So they won't just grow back as quickly as they would normally. And then in, adi in addition, I have been in communication with the Fish and Wildlife Service, um, and I was recently informed that they can allow, just by way of background, I guess I should mention, one of the problems that we have had um, as a state agency managing a part of the lagoon is that we can't go in there and just remove cattails because of the uh, federally listed, the presence of the federally listed Ridgeway Rail. And, and um, because there's an imminent fire danger, um, I was just given approval that we could go in and do work that we otherwise would not be able to do. And so we are now planning on doing um, what we can do, uh, starting besides the cattail herbicide control that we're going to do very soon, um, starting in September. And that's after the breeding season ends for the Ridgeway rail, because there will be chicks in there. And that will be a problem if we go in there and just remove cattails before those, those chicks fledge. So it looks like we're going to have fewer constraints to do cattail removal in the very near future, and then we will begin. We will begin doing that. Um, I've also checked into getting additional funds through our wildfire resiliency program that we've received some funds from the legislature this fiscal year, and so I'm working with um, with our folks uh, in Sacramento to to get some funds down to this region, and hopefully we can hire some temporary staff to help us do more work there. So that that's our current plan. That sounds great. That, that sounds great, Ed. Um, I, yes. I should, I, I forgot, uh, Mayor Sanchez, I should also mention that 
right now, I, I'm not sure that we can go in and remove the roots of some of these plants. Um, so we might not have as permanent solution as we would like, but, but it, we are able to apply some herbicide once we take off the tops of the plants, which again, keeps those cattails down pretty well for a while. So um, I have to work with the Army Corps of Engineers to see if uh, we can get around some of their permitting requirements to actually remove the roots in large areas of the lagoon. Thank you. Uh, now to the public um, for comments on this item. Um, uh, Scott, would you like to yes. speak? Scott, Scott yes, Sterling. Yes, ma'am, I would. Ed. <laughs> yes, Ed, sir. What, Ed, buddy, what, what is it exactly that keeps us from taking this invasive species and naming it an invasive species? Well, it's not it's not necessarily an invasive species because it's not non-native. Um, they cattails just tend to grow very quickly in you know open water that's of a certain depth and and so yes, it it sort of acts like an invasive species in those areas, but it's not a non-native invasive species. So we can't treat it like that and just go after it. Okay, that answers that. Next question. What is it about this that so restrains us from pulling these suckers up by the roots? Um, because if we pull a lot of those up, it turns into what's called a dredging project, basically. And you have to have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers to dredge in um, you know, US waters. And <laughs> so, yeah, and so that's our constraint on um, pulling up large, large amounts of roots or maybe any roots. And, um, I am going to be calling my colleague who's at my level. He works in the LA, uh, district and, um, asking him if, if they have any relief for areas where there are, are imminent wildfire dangers. So I'm going to be doing that in the very near future. Since I just found out about the fish and wildlife service has a policy that allows for that. That's great. What, do you, what is your hit on, on the Army Corps of Engineers? What is their reluctance or their problem with this? Well, I, I haven't spoken with them yet, but in general, you, you know, anyone that does any type of dredging in um, waters of the state requires a permit. Um, a permit. And, and there's, there's two types of permits. It's sort of a small scale or large scale. Um, and so either way, we would need a permit, which is, can be difficult and, and um, expensive to get. So I am going to be seeing if we can get some relief because of the wildfire danger on that front, like we did with the, the Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, I agree. Not only that, but, you know, we have uh, still have the mosquito issue, which yep. at any time could lead to a disease problem as well. Agreed. We, we, we agree with you on that, um, Scott. And the, the good thing is, if we, for whatever reason, if we are removing cattails, um, we're going to be asking the informing the county and the county is going to be able to apply that pesticide that will help keep the mosquito population down. So this will removing cattails definitely has at least two positive effects, you know, reducing True. the wildfire and then also reducing the mosquito control problem. I agree. I'm I'm wholeheartedly in support of every effort you can possibly make. I've only been arguing this case for 15 years. Yeah, and and um, this is the I I have been hearing you all for a long time, and and to literally until last Friday, I was unaware of any program. Uh, no one's ever told me of any program like this at the federal level um, for relief from the Endangered Species Act. So this was absolute news to me, good news, and we're going to act on it as soon as we can. Excellent. Just keep me in the loop. I'd appreciate it. My constituents are worried. Okay, so um, that that sounds fine. I can do that. Do I? Should I just send you an email? Uh, oh or, yeah. That's or fine. do you do you work with John Tanalia, your your constituent, um, closely? Yes. We're, yeah, we're okay. joined at the hip. Yeah, because I was going to say I am yeah, working with John closely. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, we're we're be being a little more uh, informal at this point. Um, oh, uh, hopefully, the the um, the record will reflect that we've had a co conversation between um, um, Ed Ed Pert and Scott Sterling regarding um, the conditions at the lagoon, uh, specifically with respect to the hazards of um, of the fire that occurred and and the high uh, probability that this could happen again if nothing is. Um, 
if, if nothing is done. So I wanna thank uh, Mr. Pert for the report and Mr. Sterling um, for providing us additional information as to the conditions that are there. I think we all um, were able to, to get, get the information who live nearby and see it. And we are very, very worried. Um, if uh, Mr. Sterling, if you can provide, if we can have one person be the contact with Mr. Pert so that, and that person agree to get that information out. Um, are, are you, um, are, do you um, work with uh, Dr. Stimmel or uh, Ms. Devaney as, as the public members um, or is it, uh, is it uh, Mr. Tanaglia? I have no idea. He's not idea. on the board. I pretty much work with John Teneglia and Jim Pentranella mm -hmm. uh, as foundation directors. And okay. uh, that's- so who, uh, who is a contact with a foundation? I am. Okay. So you would be the one agreeing to disperse the information to everyone else within the foundation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Ed, could, could you do that? Yes, let, let me ask one more question just for clarity. Yeah. So um, I've been working very closely with John Tanelia. And um, matter of fact, uh, I am going to have my staff work with John to develop what we hope will be, you know, the optimal strategy for cattail removal for protecting homes. And, and I just had a brief conversation uh, this morning with John. It was the last, I can't remember, last Thursday. Um, but anyhow, he was talking about potentially removing cattails in certain areas so that there is a gap between the bank and you know where and the more in deeper water where cattails are so that there would at least be a fuel break and there would be hopefully less danger um, of right. the, the fire spreading so uh i that was the first that i had heard about such a uh, an idea which sounds like a good idea to me and so i'm going to have my staff reach out to john and talk to john and and maybe jim uh, and maybe scott you could be there as well but um that's our next step is to figure out where we should put our energies in terms of removing cattails for the purpose of fire prevention. Thank you. And, and, and uh, just for the record, again, uh, uh, John is the uh, representative for the Homeowners Association at St. Malo. Yeah. So that's Mayor why Sanchez? You... Yes. We have received, um, there's a few hands from the public to speak. John is one of them, but I, ha I okay. do have one person who raised their hand before that, um, which is Natalie, Natalie Shapiro. Um, if you uh, would allow me to allow the, Natalie to speak, I can also allow John to speak as well. Yeah, why don't we go ahead. Uh, uh, Scott, are you are you done with your comments so we can? Um, sure. I'll another, okay. My... Okay. So let's go ahead and have John speak since, um, since, uh, uh, we've kind of been speaking on his behalf, I guess. <laughs> All right, yeah, so I, I will allow John to speak and then um, Natalie Shapiro would be after. Thank you very much, appreciate that. John? Can you hear me? Yes. Great, hello everybody. Um, for those that don't know me, <clears throat> I'm the um, <clears throat> spokesman for Sam Mallow and I'm also uh, one of the key property owners. I own the Lagoon Channel, the north half of it. And I'm the one that negotiated the uh, EIR for the Buena Vista Lagoon restoration over about 13 year period with uh, Keith uh, Greer, who's been the point guy I've been dealing with at Sandag. Um, so my only uh, additional comment, Scott Sterling handled it well, as well as, as Ed did as well uh, too, is that I think um, as this group collectively and uh, working with Ed and Scott Sterling and myself, that we should spend as much time as we can trying to coattail on the US Fish and Wildlife um, approval permit, et cetera, because of this fire life and safety issue with this big fire that just happened and was arson, by the way, which is, makes it even even scarier, uh, that we try and coattail with the core on that very subject. Because I think, you know, both agencies are federal agencies. And I think when the core hears that US Fish and Wildlife is moving ahead with allowing <clears throat> California Fish and Wildlife to get permits going, I think that's very important to point that out to the folks at the core and I'd be happy to help any way I can with uh, discussions with the core on this subject. But I think federal talking to federal will be a good thing. And I think um, what Ed and I both just found out the last couple of days uh, because of the fire danger, the public health and safety issue, that this is a really uh, important thing. And it's a good, good news that we've got one big check out of the way, which is the federal Fish and Wildlife Agency. 
now let's work with the core. So that was my only <clears throat> comment really at that point, at this point um, on this subject. Everything else was covered by um, Ed and Scott. So those are my two cents uh, thank you. and I'll throw it back to the group. Thank you, thank you, John. I appreciate that. And um, so John <laughs> and Scott and Ed, um, the three of you are on the ad hoc committee on the Winnipeg Lagoon cattail control, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we do have another member of the public that wishes to speak. Natalie Shapiro, so I have allowed you to unmute. You can speak at any time. Hey, thank you. I actually just had questions for Kim Smith. I'm not sure if she's still there. I can also just contact her directly. On this on this item? Um, it was actually the previous item. I had my hand up, but it wasn't noticed. But um, I think I'll just go ahead and contact Kim outside the meeting. Okay, my apologies. I, I didn't... Um, I no worries. Know. No worries at all. No problem. It's We're still adjusting all here. So I think the meeting right. is great. My though. apologies, Natalie. No worries at all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so uh, no other members from the public who wish to speak on this item, which is 5B. Um, so so Mayor, have... Mayor, San Mayor Sanchez, I'm yes. sorry, I raised my hand. I just want to make one comment following up on uh, Mr. Tenelia's yes. comment, which is um, uh, I will be reaching out to my colleague at uh, the core. And if I get enough time today, I will, I will give him a call. His name is David Castanon. I've worked with him for many years. He's, he's very reasonable. He's a good guy. And I'll, I'll see who the contact would be down here to work with. So I, I will just begin to work on that, on seeing what, what kind of progress we can make. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. I never thought that there would be a change in the federal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me neither. Your fingers crossed. Did I say that out loud? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell who's laughing, but okay. <laughs> All right, so do, do any members now, now back to the board, would anyone like to make a comment from the board on 5B? This is the update on the Winnipeg Lagoon Cattail Control Ad Hoc Committee um, report, which basically dealt with the fire and, and uh, some of the changes that have happened um, with, with the, at the federal government, as well as um, the wonderful things that are um, happening by, with Ed, Ed Scott and uh, John's advocacy. Anything else? I, do, I see no hands raised by our uh, committee members. We're now on committee member comments. And then after that, I'll take some additional comments on items not on the agenda from the public if there are any left. So committee member comments, do we have any comments by the committee members? And that would be, um, Uh, Keith, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? Mayor Pro Tem, the city of Carlsbad. Are you there, Keith? He, he could be away. I mean, he did state earlier that he, he was on. Right, yes. I just wanted to give him an opportunity to um, speak should he want to. Uh, uh, Kelly Devaney, the public member for the city of Oceanside, would you, do you have any comments? No, I don't at this time. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Stimmel, a public member for the city of Carlsbad, do you have any comments you'd like to share with us? I would just add that uh, what I've heard today is very promising, uh, both from yes. Kim Smith on item 5A and certainly John, Ed, and Scott's comments um, about the cattails and, and some of these changes. So very positive things today. Yes, extremely positive. Kim, I just want to say again, thank you so much for everything that you and others are doing at Sandag. Thank you so much. We so appreciate it. We're halfway there, right? Is what you're saying. We've got 4 yeah. million, we need another 4 million. And um, we're truly optimistic. We're, we're more than halfway there. So that, that's Okay, good. cool. <laughs> we are more than, it's 7 million, yep. right? That we have to get, yep. not 8. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any uh, comments on items not on the agenda? Scott, is that some, something you wanted to speak on items not on the agenda? No, you, you, we handled it. Okay, fantastic. Uh, staff, are, uh, Stephanie, are there any requests from the public to speak on items not on the agenda that we may not have caught um, the first round, the first time around? 
Mayor Sanchez, we do not have any written requests to speak at this time. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak on items not in, on the agenda, you can raise your hand now. Just give you a few moments. I am seeing no hands being raised. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so we're now at uh, item number seven, which is our next meeting date, which is September 19th, 2022. Um, the host will be City of Carlsbad. Uh, we are going to be doing this virtually again. Hopefully this um, made it um, even more possible for people to participate. Thank you, everyone. Um, without further comments, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye.